In modern C Sharp code, in order to use asynchronous programming, we use async await. The idea is that if we have a method in which we want to use asynchronous programming, we mark it with the async keyword and those asynchronous operations for which we do not want to block the execution thread, we can use the await operator. So when we use await, what we are doing is that we are freeing the current thread from having to wait for the execution of the task. In this way, we are avoiding to block the current thread that we are using, and then that thread can be used in another task. Async await works in any .NET development environment, both in like console applications, Win4 applications, ASP.NET Core for web development, Blazor for interactive web applications, Xamarin for mobile applications, etc. In this course, we are going to use a WinForms application because it is really simple to use. Nonetheless, anything that we do in the WinForms application will be applicable to any other .NET development environment, like ASP.NET Core. So let's create that WinForms application. In this WinForms application, we are going to do all of our examples. So let's go to create a new project here in Visual Studio. And let's write here WinForms. And you will see that we have two options. We have the .NET Framework option and the .NET Core option. At the time of recording this video, this .NET Core version is somewhat unstable. Therefore, we will use .NET Framework. Nevertheless, everything that we do in this course is applicable to both .NET Framework and .NET Core. So let's choose .NET Framework and let's click on next. I will write here concurrency for the solution name and WinForms for the project name and I will use .NET Framework 4.8 and then I will click on create and this is going to create our WinForms project. Here we have a default WinForms project and the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to drag a few controls here in the template so I will drag this button into the screen and I will press F4 in order to open the properties of this button and I will change the text property into something like a start and I will also change the name property of this button so I will come here and I will say button start and I will press enter then I will double click on the button so that we get this event handler here this method that we have here is going to be executed whenever we click on the button. Now, something else that I want to do is to go back here and here below the button, I want to have a GIF, a loading GIF. So let me go to Google Chrome and let's write here loading GIF. Let's go to images and let's look for a loading GIF. We can use this one. Let's click on here. And I will right click on here and say save image as and then I will look for the location of my project so for that I will come here right click here open folder in file explorer and I will take this address from here and then I will go back here and I will paste this here and I will press enter now I am in the current project so I will say loading gif I will press enter and now if we go to the WinForms folder, we have the loading GIF here. Now we need to import that image into our project. For that, I will drag a picture box. I can do this. I can write here picture and then I will be able to drag this control here. I will put it here. Then I will press F4 and I will go to image here in the properties. I'll click on here, local resource import. I will go to where my project is and I will select the loading GIF. I will click on OK and finally I will make this bigger and besides that I need to change the size mode to center image. So let's say here center image and now we have our GIF here. Let's save this and also before we forget let's go back to the properties of the loading GIF and let's change the name to something more meaningful like loading gif 
and let's press enter. Now let's press control F5 to run our application and let's see that everything is working. As you can see, we have our start button here and our loading GIF here spinning around, which means that we are ready to start working with asynchronous programming. By using asynchronous programming, we can avoid having the UI freeze because of a long running operation. Let's see that. Let's go to the code behind of this form. Let's go here. And we're going to say something like thread control dot in order to bring this namespace. And we're going to say a slip. We're going to say that we're going to slip for five seconds. So let's say time span from seconds and let's say five. And this will freeze the current thread for five seconds. And we're going to see that our loading GIF will be stopped during those five seconds. So let's press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And here we have our GIF. If we press start, you are going to see that the GIF has froze. And not only that, let's click on here again. I cannot drag this around. The whole window is blocked. This is a bad user experience because then the user cannot interact with your application. As we said, what we do in order to avoid this is using asynchronous programming. Let's see an example. Let's close this and let's go back to Visual Studio and let's do the following. First, let's go back to the UI. I will click our loading GIF and then I will press F4 and I will say that it is going to be invisible by default so i will make visible equal to false and i will save and now i will go back here and before this line of code i will say loading gif dot visible equal to true and then after the process i will say false so in this way when we click on the button the loading gif will be displayed and then after it has finished this operation then we will make the GIF invisible. But instead of doing this, like this, this is a synchronous operation, we want to do an asynchronous operation. So let's say tag.delay, and then I will say time span from seconds, and I will say five seconds. This is essentially doing exactly what we're doing here, but with the difference that this is going to perform the operation asynchronously. Now, since this will be a asynchronous operation, we need to mark this method as async. So let's say async here. And not only that, if we want to be able to wait for this work to be done, we have to use the await operator. As we said in the past, the await operator is going to release the current thread that is running from having to wait this operation. Therefore, that thread is going to be available for other tasks. And then after five second passes, that thread will be called to this place in order to run the rest of the method. It is important to realize that await does not mean that the thread will have to be blocked waiting for the operation. Await means the thread is free to go to do another thing and then it will come back when this operation is done. So let's see that. Let's press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And as you can see, we only have the start button here. The GIF is invisible, but when we click on here, you are going to see that we have our loading GIF here, and after a few seconds, the loading GIF disappears. And not only that, if I click back Start, you can see that I can drag the window around. Why can I do this? Why can I do this if we have a process running here? We can do this because the UI thread was released by using the await operator. And since the UI thread is free, then that means that the UI does not freeze. Bottom line is this, if you want to have a responsive UI that does not get blocked, because of long running operations, you must use asynchronous programming. So let's get rid of this. And now we will talk about tasks.